Hello and welcome back to another tutorial in this logical reasoning lecture series. This time we are going to discuss a linear arrangement problem with two rows. These problems generally would have two directions mentioned, mostly north and south, with people facing different directions, and we would need to figure out the orientation of objects accordingly. You need to be very careful with these directions given in the question, as otherwise you may draw an incorrect configuration in most cases. So let's go to the question now and see how these problems are tackled without making a mess of them. The question here mentions eight girls who are standing in two rows of four girls each. So the girls in the first row are facing the girls in the second row. So basically four of them are facing north and four are facing south. We are told that all these eight girls have got different heights. Now with the help of the nine statements given in the question, we need to figure out the order of their heights and the arrangement in which they are standing. I'll advise you to pause the video here, attempt the question yourself and start the video again once you are done. So let's solve this problem now. The first step would be to make a structure like this. So you can see here that we have made two blocks, one for girls who are facing south and one for girls who are facing north. North is taken as the upward direction. The girls who will occupy positions 5, 6, 7 and 8 would face upward that is in the north direction. And the girls who occupy positions 1, 2, 3 and 4 would be facing south. I hope this structure is clear. Now we'll break this problem up into three parts. In the first part, we'll try and figure out the order of their heights. Look at statement 1. It says that Teji is shorter than Kali. So we can write it like this. Here T is less than K means that the height of T that is Teji is less than that of K that is Kali. So we will use just the letters here. So Teji becomes T and Kali becomes K. Let's move forward. Look at statement 5 now. It says that Dia is taller than Fiza but shorter than Teji. Now Teji is already there in the picture. It says that Dia and Fiza both are shorter than Teji and Fiza is shorter than Dia. So if we have to put it here, we will put it like this. Let's move forward and look at statement 3 now. It says that Avni is shorter than Gati and is facing south. So let's ignore the direction part for a while and just concentrate on the relative heights of the girls. So it tells us that Avni is shorter than Gati. Now we can see that neither Avni nor Gati figures among the four girls who are there on the screen. So it means that we have to put this information about Avni and Gati separately. Something like this. So now these are two separate blocks. One tells us the order of the previous four girls and this block of two girls which tells us about the relative heights of A and G that is Avni and Gati. So let's leave it like that for the moment and move forward and look at statement 7 now. It tells us that Neha is shorter than only two girls, Avni and Gati. Now Avni and Gati, that's A and G, are already there on the screen. So from this statement, it becomes very obvious that Gati is the tallest girl, then comes Avni and then comes Neha. So let's put Neha here. Now we know that G, A and N are the three tallest girls in that order only. So we can connect these two blocks there on the screen and put a sign like this. So that's the relative order of these seven girls now. Let's look at statement 4 now. It tells us that Pari is the shortest among the eight girls. Now the seven girls are already here. We just need to put Pari at the leftmost part of this column. So this completes the order of the heights of the girls. So we are done with the first part. Now the next task would be to separate the girls who are facing south from the girls who are facing north. Let's proceed. Statement 3 tells us that Avni is facing south. So let's write A in the block of girls that are facing south. Statement 4 tells us that Neha is also facing south. So let's write N beside A. Statement 4 also tells us that Pari is standing directly opposite Neha. It means that Pari has to be facing north. So let's put Pari's name in the block of girls who are facing north. Look at statement 8 now. It tells us that Fiza is facing south. So let's write 
F in the block of girls who are facing south and since Teji is standing directly opposite her, she has to be facing north. So let's put T here. Let's look at statement 2 now. It says that the tallest girl among the 8 is not facing north. Tallest girl we know is G, that's Gati. If she is not facing north, she has to be facing south. So let's put G here. Now we know the 4 girls who are facing south. They are A, N, F and G. So the rest 4 obviously would be facing north. The two girls who are not there on any of these two blocks as yet are D and K. So let's put D and K here. So now this block is complete and we know that the four girls who are facing north are P, T, D and K. So we are now done with the second part of solving this problem. We know which four girls are facing north and which four girls are facing south. Now let's try arranging them in the positions numbered from 1 to 8. Look at statement 9 now. It says that Dia is standing at the third position to the left of Pari. The only way in which Pari and Dia can be arranged in the structure is this. There is no other possibility. Let's move forward and look at statement 4 now. It tells us that Pari is standing directly opposite Neha. The position directly opposite Pari is 4. So Neha has to occupy position 4. Now statement 6 says that Kali is standing at the second position to the right of Dia. The second position to the right of Dia, that's D, is 7. So let's write K here. Now the only position left in this block is 6 and the only girl left is T. So it's obvious that T has to occupy position 6. Let's go to statement 8 now. It tells us that Teji is standing directly opposite Fiza. The position directly opposite Teji is 2. So Fiza has to occupy this position. Now let's look at statement 2 that tells us that the tallest girl among the 8 is not standing at any of the ends. The tallest girl here is G, that's Gati. If she is not standing at any of the ends of the row, then she cannot be at position 1. So if we look at this column, the only position left for G is 3. So let's put her here. Now the only position left in this column is 1 and the only girl left is Avni, that's A. So it's obvious that Avni has to occupy position 1. So let's put her here. And with this step, we have completed the solution to the problem. So that's the way to solve linear arrangement problems with multiple rows. If the problem contains some other conditions as well, as the relative heights of people were given in this question, you should break the process of finding the solution in several parts and concentrate on one part first without bothering about others. Once you are done with it, go to the next level of the solution by taking up another part. This approach makes it much easier by simplifying the solution and thereby reducing the chance of any confusion while solving the problem. In the next tutorial, I would discuss a problem based on different floors of a multi-storied building. Again, a very popular setup for logical reasoning puzzles. Goodbye and take care.